We begin tonight with the breaking news. Just a short time ago, that panel of scientists and doctors giving the green light, recommending the FDA issue that emergency use authorization for Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Right here in the U.S., of course, it's now in the FDA's hands, and a final decision could come at any time. Millions of doses already ready to be shipped from Pfizer's facility near Kalamazoo, Michigan, all over the country. It does bring hope on a day when we witness something else, a terrible number, one of the darkest 24 hours in this pandemic. A record 3,124 Americans lost to the virus in a single day. More Americans than were killed on 9-11 from the virus in just 24 hours, about one death every 30 seconds. That grim and growing toll adding urgency to the FDA's hearing over Zoom today. A panel of outside experts weighing the risks and the benefits, including those reports in the UK, of those two frontline workers having an allergic reaction after the shot, and concerns over children and pregnant women as well. But tonight, that panel voting 17 to 4 to urge the FDA to move forward on this. So tonight, how soon could we get the final approval from the FDA? And what about those concerns and the four who voted against it? What were their reasons why? We have it all covered for you. Dr. Jha is standing by with your questions answered tonight. But we're going to begin here with our chief national affairs correspondent, Tom Yamas, leading us off at the FDA in Maryland tonight. Tonight, in what may be the country's most important Zoom call, the moment America has been waiting for. Based on the totality of scientific evidence available, the benefits of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine outweigh its risks for use in individuals. The FDA advisory committee voting to recommend emergency use authorization for the first vaccine against the coronavirus. We do have a favorable vote and that concludes this portion of the meeting. The Pfizer vaccine found to be 95 percent effective with no serious side effects. Evan Fine, a Pfizer trial volunteer, believes he got the vaccine, not the placebo. The reason? He had mild symptoms like fever and chills following that second injection. Today, urging the FDA to authorize its use. It is simply immoral and unethical to deny the vaccine to healthcare workers or first responders who want it. An EUA must be granted and it must be granted tonight. We spoke with Evan. Americans all across the country are living in fear of this horrific virus. You think you received the vaccine. Personally, what does that feel like? It feels wonderful. I don't live in fear. I have to take the basic precautions that everyone else does. I have to follow the rules, but I do not fear COVID-19 anymore. And I want all Americans to stop fearing COVID-19. And with this vaccination, I believe that's possible. An issue that came up time and time again, that news from the UK. Two healthcare workers who suffered allergic reactions after being injected. Both have a history of severe allergies. There are tens of millions of people in this country who carry EpiPens with them because they have peanut allergies, because they have egg allergies, who are going to believe now that they can't get this vaccine. That's a lot of people. The panel recommending more research has to be done, and the FDA says warnings should go out for people who might be allergic to the ingredients in the vaccine. The next step, FDA authorization. That could happen at any moment. We can act quickly and we uh, intend to. We understand the urgency of the situation. The moment Pfizer gets the green light, workers at its plant near Kalamazoo, Michigan, will start moving 2.9 million vaccine doses, removing them from 300 freezers, then loading trays into special thermal boxes packed with dry ice to keep the vaccine at 94 degrees below zero. Our Alex Perez is outside that plant. They have been planning this for months. Employees here at this massive facility will be working 24 seven until all of the doses in that first batch are loaded onto trucks and shipped out. U.S. Marshals will also be here to secure the operation. Teams will be tracking those boxes outfitted with GPS and temperature monitoring as they move across the country on trucks and planes from FedEx and UPS heading to more than 600 sites. The two shipping giants splitting up the country to divide and conquer. The goal? To hit every corner of the U.S. within 48 hours. And so let's get to Tom Yamas with the late breaking news. He's live at FDA headquarters tonight. And Tom, the vote was not unanimous to authorize. authorize. We reported at the top there 17 to 4. A lot of people likely immediately asking why were there four who voted no? What were their concerns? 
David, there were a lot of questions over the several hours of this Zoom call whether enough research was done in 16 and 17 year olds. But many members voted in the majority, the vast majority, 17 to 4. And one of those members who voted the majority said the question right now in the research is not do we know everything, it's do we know enough. The FDA, where we are tonight, almost always listens to its advisory panels. David? And quickly, Tom, so this was bottom line about age that they were concerned about? This was about 16 and 17 year olds. You'll remember the emergency use authorization targets 16 and older for the vaccine. Some people were concerned about 16 and 17 year olds, but again, the vast majority, 17 voting in favor, say there was enough research and it was safe for those 16 and 17 year olds. All right, Tom David. Yamas leading us off tonight. Tom, thank you. Of course, we know so many of you at home have questions tonight, especially after those initial reports of those two frontline workers in the UK who had allergic reactions. They're okay. And of course, the concerns you just heard from Tom and his report about young people. So let's bring in Dr. Rashi Shah, Dean of the Brown University of School of Public Health. He's back with us tonight. And Dr. Shah, first of all, I just wanted to get uh, your reaction to this late news of that vote, 17 to 4. And do you believe from what you've read in the FDA's report that the vaccine is safe? David, thank you for having me on. This is a big day. Uh, this is a big day for the pandemic. Uh, I do believe that the data is now clear that the vaccines appear to be safe and effective. And I think the four votes against really was about the fact that we don't have a lot of data on 16 and 17 year olds. Not concerns that there's a problem with them, but we just don't know as much about that group. I know the panel also talked at length today about those two healthcare workers in the UK who had allergic reactions. Uh, uh, what would you say to Americans who are concerned about those initial reports? We know those healthcare workers are okay in all indications that uh, they're sending a message that we should move forward, but it did cause a reaction and concern out there. Yeah, so, you know, uh, almost every vaccine medicine can cause allergic reactions. Uh, these two individuals had a history of severe reactions. What I would say to Americans is if you have a history of severe reactions, you need to talk to your doctor and, uh, and we need to sort out what exactly caused it. It's not a concern for most people, uh, but maybe for those, we need to just take it a bit more carefully until we understand why, what happened. And not to put you on the spot tonight, Dr. Ja, but this is now in the hands of the FDA. How quickly do you think they'll decide this? Oh, I think they're going to decide in the next 24 hours. I'd love it if they did tonight, but I suspect, but certainly by tomorrow morning. All right, Dr. Ashish Shah with us every step of the way. Dr. Shah, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.